Hi there, folks. Today, I'm going to talk about a little video I've seen recently. Evolution refuted in 2 minutes and 37 seconds. This should be really good since evolution as a th scientific theory has more than 150 years of research and evidence to back it up. But apparently this guy can uh, refute it in 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Let's have a look. You hear this one a lot. Science has proven evolution, therefore evolution is true. Wow, 4 seconds in and he already made one big mistake. Science doesn't seek to prove things. It's a disproval process, not a proving one. This is a basic misunderstanding of the scientific method, and not to mention a little ridiculous. Let's see what else he has to say. Since evolution is true and Christians don't believe it, then Christians don't believe science and they aren't rational people. My, that was a screaming leap into illogic. Whilst I personally believe that any belief in the supernatural is, in general, in irrational in nature, it doesn't necessarily mean that the people who believe that are irrational in nature. For example, no one would call uh, Dr. Robert Bacher, one of the foremost paleontologists in the history of the field, an irrational man, but not only is he a great paleontologist, he's also a Pentecost minister. This shows that belief in Christianity and belief in evolution are not mutually exclusive states. And back to the moron. Really, let's put that claim to the test. First off, evolution in the sense that things change is evident. No rational person disputes that. Therefore, rational Christians believe it. We can observe change. Yes, I know what you're thinking. If rational Christians believe in evolution, which is change, what the hell is the point of making his video? I'm really not too sure. Let's, uh, let's continue on and see what else he has to say. But evolution in the sense that life came from non-life and then that life began to randomly generate new genetic information? Okay, wait, 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 wait a second, Bonehead. What did you just say? But evolution in the sense that life came from non-life. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Uh, that's abiogenesis, not evolution. Abiogenesis is, this, is a study of how life may have arisen from non-living material. Evolution is an explanation of biodiversity after life began. There's absolutely nothing in evolution that says anything about the actual origins of life. Just that life changes over time. Now, whilst the processes are extremely complex, the concept itself is very simple. It's small incremental changes built up upon one another over long periods of time. I don't understand why so many people have such a difficulty understanding that very basic concept. And back to numbnuts. And over time it eventually produced humans is something entirely different, and something that quite honestly doesn't hold up against science. In other words, evolution in the sense of molecules to man is not scientifically plausible and therefore should not be viewed as scientific fact. Of course it shouldn't be viewed as a scientific fact because it's not a scientific fact, you boob. The theory of evolution doesn't say anything remotely like that. Quite honestly, it is in great opposition to science, that is, observational science, the kind of science we can test and repeat and use our five senses to understand. Do you know of another kind of science that doesn't use empirical studies and tested hypotheses? Oh, wait a minute, yeah, creation science. Oops, sorry. No, go on, go on, go on. I, f I find this absolutely fascinating. Science demonstrates that over time, living organisms lose genetic information. They don't gain it. Really? Uh, and what are your sources for that tidbit of information? Oh, you don't have any. Oh, Okay. That same science uh, demonstrates that life doesn't arise from non-life. Hey, Follow along from? if you would. Fact one, there is no known observable process by which new genetic information can be added to an organism's genetic code. None. In experiments with bacteria, populations arising from a single bacterium have shown beneficial and non-beneficial mutations. Thus, information added to their genetic code, you dick. And for those interested, the source for that little tidbit of information is in the description of this video. I can't wait for the next bit. That pretty much refutes evolution right away because there's no way to go from a fish to an amphibian without adding new information, right? If living organisms cannot produce new genetic information, how can anything gradually change into something of higher intelligence or form or complexity? That is, how can anything evolve from an amoeba to a man without adding new genetic information? Okay. Can't get from an amoeba to a man without adding genetic information. As humans, we have 46 diploid chromosomes. Amoeba proteus, 250. Yeah, you'd need to add a lot of information to get from, a hu to get from an amoeba to a human. Really, add it. You have to add it. 250.
question? The answer, of course, is that it can't, plain and simple. Now, some have speculated and they have imagined all kinds of things, and they brought in artists to produce creative renderings based on guesses, and they have been successful in telling a very convincing story that humans evolved from ape-like creatures. But those are just drawings, people. They're just stories. And the idea that seven billion people could come out of two, one of which was corrupted by a talking snake. That's based in reality, is it? But what we really observe is humans are humans and apes are apes. Now, if fact one buried evolutionary thinking deep into the Precambrian soil, this next fact, fact two, tosses so much sediment on it that not even the greatest team of paleontologists with the latest subterranean gizmo could dig up the remains. Check this out. Never, again, never has it been observed that life can come from non-life. So here are two major scientific evidences against evolution. I reiterate for clarity, life has never been observed to come from non-life, and there is no known, observable process by which new genetic information can be added to the genetic code of an organism. So, molecules demand evolution doesn't really make scientific sense. Of course it doesn't make scientific sense, you nitwit, because what you did is not science. That's gibberish. But anyway, if you've managed to watch this far, you're going to love this. I mean, this is just absolute beauty. Yet we are all here, and life is all around us in various forms. Although evolution cannot account for this, the Bible can. The Bible reveals that the all-powerful, all-knowing, supernatural God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing, and all life according to its kinds, that is, each with its own set of genetic information. <laughs> so, again, what the Bible reveals makes sense of what we see and understand. Evolution does not. Enough said.